Welcome back, creepy kitties. We are continuing last week's theme by focusing on Lon Chaney, the man of a thousand faces. Today we are drawing London After Midnight. This was not selected by my Patreon voting poll as usual, but was requested by a special guest speaker I had planned to uh, give a commentary for this video, and at the last minute he had to back out, so now I have to talk about London After Midnight. Poor me. Okay, so, first of all, the thing about London After Midnight is it's only available on DVD when you become a patron for Scapula Comics on Patreon. Once you become a patron, you get a HD Ultra Transfer of London After Midnight, which includes the Spider Pit sequence from King Kong, and also Marilyn Monroe's nude scenes from The Misfits. All you have to do is join Scapula Comics on Patreon. None of, none of you are falling for this, are you? No? No, it was worth a try. So yes, London After Midnight is mostly known for three things. Number one, it's a lost film, and chances are it's not going to pop up again, although all of us monster kids are keeping our fingers crossed. Number two, it's a fake-out movie. So I can give spoilers about a film that's nearly a century old. There is no real vampire after all. The plot of this movie is actually pretty readily available, both as the screenplay which was published, and because director Todd Browning remade it himself years later as Mark of the Vampire, with uh, Bela Lugosi taking over the vampire role, although he was not wearing this makeup. And speaking of the makeup, that is probably the third and most importantly remembered thing about this movie is Lon Chaney's freaky ass makeup for this. It is, seriously, it's one of his best makeup jobs ever. It, this thing still packs a wall up, again, nearly a century later. It hasn't influenced other monsters. In my uh, video for Alonzo the Armless, I was referring to the London After Midnight Vampire as the Babadook, which I thought was gonna piss off some people, because I'm a little brat like that. But yes, this was totally an influence on the Babadook. There, there's no other way about it. And I'm sure that there's other famous monsters that were inspired by Chaney's interpretation of a vampire. Mostly those crazy eyes that are like pulled back so wide it must have hurt like hell wearing those things. So Chaney gets my respect for that. Those teeth, which are so different from what we are accustomed to seeing with movie vampires, where it's either just the elongated canines, which is more often the case, or Nosferatu's rat incisors, which are also kind of cool. But come on, look at these teeth. He looks like a shark or a piranha. And wow, imagining how those would work. There's no way the sensors would have allowed those kind of teeth to be biting into someone's neck. It's also interesting to see Chaney's interpretation of the vampire, because as a lot of you probably have read before, Lon Chaney was first in line to play the role of Dracula, which was cut short when Chaney died of throat cancer. A lot of other actors were considered, and the role went back to our old buddy, Bela Lugosi. As for what Chaney had planned for his Dracula, who knows, because he kept his plan secret, and to this day, the only thing we have to refer to for what it might have looked like is the London After Midnight vampire, but then again, who can say whether or not Chaney would have pulled the same trick twice, who knows. Use your imagination. Use your imagination to think about what this movie would have looked like with the King Kong spiders and naked Marilyn Monroe. It would have been fantastic, and it's only available when you become a patron at Scapula Comics, and it was worth a try. Needless to say, whether or not it's lost or will ever be seen again, London After Midnight still has a pretty cemented foothold in horror history, mostly because of that awesome makeup and the artistic genius of Lon Chaney. We'll be honoring Cheney with one more drawing video, so tune in next time and try to guess what he'll look like. Bye bye.